Okay, so what we're going to do now is now that you have seen what we're going to be creating and what we're going to end up with, you don't really know yet what we're going to be creating, um, but um, we're going to help go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to the content browser and I'm going to close this blueprint here. And um, you can do this in any folder you want. I have a folder set up called My Blueprints. This is kind of where I'm going to be doing a lot of test blueprints and stuff like that. So the first thing I want to mention is that there are a few different types of blueprints that we can create. So I'm going to jump back into my scene here. And I'm going to show you that there's a few different blueprints. Okay. Um, two of the most commonly used are just the two main blueprint types that you want to remember um, and it's only two of them so it's pretty easy to remember right is uh, level blueprints and then there's actor blueprints so whoa, whoa whoa back up what are you talking about what's a level blueprint and an actor blueprint so a level blueprint is basically a set of instructions that causes something to happen in this specific level so if you look at this uh, this level is called example map. And if I looked at the top left I can see it's called example map. And this is what the level looks like if I just kind of look around here. I'm kind of in a big box with a bunch of cubes everywhere. It looks like I'm stuck here for the rest of my life. But um, this is this level is called example map. A level blueprint is going to save a bunch of blueprint instructions to make stuff happen uh, inside of this level. So that means that if I go to another level, open a new level or open up a level that somebody else made or I made last week or whatever, that level blueprint is not going to have the blueprint that this level has. In other words, this level's blueprint belongs to this level. Now I could copy and paste nodes from the level blueprint to another level blueprint. I can do that. but let's forget about that for a second and let's just realize that uh, level blueprints belong to this level so if I go up here you'll notice that there's this blueprints button if I click on that it's gonna open up a drop-down list now I can create a new class blueprint here I can also open one if I go to open it's basically the same thing as going to the content browser and doing a search for blueprints uh, for example I can go here to this blueprint folder there's some blueprints in here. Um, sure, there's a lot more blueprints all over the place, right? So basically, coming up here and going to Open Class Blueprint is the same thing as doing that. I mean, here's my Thor blueprint. See that? It's just another way of accessing stuff from the content browser. That's basically what it is. It's another little mini content browser specific for all the blueprints in your game project. Um, I can also create a new blueprint from here. I'm not going to do that right now. I can also create new game mode blueprint, but here we have level blueprint. I'm going to click on that. And it opened it up in my second monitor, so I'll just bring it over. And here we have a level blueprint. And how do we know it's level blueprint? It says it in really big letters down here, level blueprint. So this is the level blueprint. Okay. We're not going to be working in the level blueprint in this tutorial. All right. Now the level blueprint can be used for like doing a lot of different things. For example, uh, streaming sub levels, maybe starting up and playing a matinee sequence that kicks off a cinematic movie right before the level starts or whatever, stuff like that. I mean, you can do a lot of different things with the level blueprint. So when would you want to use a level blueprint? That really depends on the type of game you're making and what your strategy is to develop and make that game. Um, really depends. Me personally, I like using, I, I usually use the level blueprint to do things like uh, optimization, like let's say for example, streaming sub-levels, um, when the player hits a certain uh, trigger or volume, um, also kicking off again matinees, when I need a matinee to play, say for example, player walks into a room and I want a matinee camera to kind of pull back and show the room so that the player sees the puzzle similar to what you would see in a game like let's say Uncharted you just walked into a new cavern chamber there's a big Buddha statue at the end of the room 
and it's holding these two puzzle pieces and the designers want you to see that stuff so that you can get a clue as to maybe how to solve the puzzle or know that the Buddha statue is part of solving the puzzle something like that so kicking off a matinee would be a great example of using a uh, level blueprint okay and there's a bunch of other stuff you can do with that too but I'm not going to get into that so I'm going to go ahead and close this for now what we're going to do is we're going to create an actor blueprint and an actor blueprint is basically what this guy is it's a blueprint that we can drag and drop from the content browser place inside of our level and move it around rotate it you know do all kinds of cool stuff with it and the cool thing about those blueprints are they're independent they don't belong to a level if I'm in ex if I'm in this level called example map I can drop this door blueprint in here because it's an actor blueprint if I have another level called I don't know gopher field or something I can go ahead and drop this blueprint in there too so this blueprint can exist pretty much anywhere I want it to in one level two levels ten levels fifty levels doesn't matter because it's right here it's an asset just like anything else any actor that you can place in the level which is really really cool okay so with that said what I'm gonna do now is show you how to create your first blueprint so that's pretty cool that's pretty easy to do actually it's not hard at all one thing that I want you to understand is that blueprint well I'm not gonna lie to you it's not a one button click solution you don't just open blueprint and click a make awesome game button and boom you have yourself a triple-a game and now you can go and sell on Steam or something. That's not the way it works. But up until now, in our point in the games industry, Blueprint is probably the closest thing to the easiest tool ever made for making games. No joke. I'm not exaggerating. It, it is really insane how powerful this thing is and how easy it is to use relative to other methods like coding, scripting, programming, that sort of thing. Anyway, that's enough uh, enough rambling for me. Let's go ahead and create our first door blueprint. So what I can do is I can just right click here and um, if you've ever created a material or even a particle system you know that you can do that here. Well you create a blueprint the same way. You just select it here and then you're gonna get this window and Unreal is gonna ask you a question. It wants you to basically pick a parent class. So what kind of class is this thing going to be? Is it going to be a pawn, character, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? So uh, what are the differences here? Well, an actor is an object that can just be placed in the scene. So an actor could be anything from an explosion. It can be a wall. It can be an automated door, like in our case. It could be uh, a light bulb with a switch. It could be a console that a player has to hit in order to start hacking the device uh, while their buddies cover them from like enemy spies trying to break into the room and stop them from stealing the data. It could be a lot of different things. It could be a pickup too, like an ammo pickup that players have to pick up in a game like Unreal Tournament to add more ammo to their inventory. A pawn is something that, that, that can be a uh, possessed and receive input from a controller. And controllers are usually controlled by people. So a pawn would be you, the player. Um, it could also be your buddies if you're playing a multiplayer game, say like a co-op shooter. You and all your buddies, you're all pawns, etc, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick an actor class because that's what the door is. The door is not a person. It's not played by you or me or any of your buddies. Um, it's it's an object that we place in the world and does something. In this case, it's a door that opens. So I'll click on Actor, and that's going to create a new blueprint. And let's rename this. So let's call this. Um, I'm just going to call this Super Door, just so it has a different name than the original one that I made. And there we go. You notice that there's no thumbnail, just says Blueprint, and that's it. I'm going to save. Um, very important save while you work on stuff doesn't matter what program you're using and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this and here we go so here's my uh, blueprint <laughs> there's nothing in here it's completely empty well technically there's one thing this root uh, this default scene root which is technically an item 
but it's actually nothing that's invisible. There's nothing there. It just defines that this thing exists, basically. Okay? So when we first open up this blueprint, um, we notice that we have a viewport. And you can navigate the viewport just like you could the regular viewport in the Unreal Editor. So I can click and hold the right mouse button to look around. I can use the W, A, S, and D keys to kind of move around. Same stuff like the uh, editor viewport. I also got a view menu up here where I can select a bunch of different stuff like a floor, a grid. I can turn on real time. I'm going to leave it at the defaults. I also have, if you notice, it's just like the editor viewport where we have move tool, rotate tool, scale tool. We also have all of these different buttons that allow us to change the grid snapping, angle snapping, scale snapping, all of that stuff, just like the regular editor viewport, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, we have this details panel, which if you've been using Unreal 4 for a bit, you'll know that the details panel is everywhere, uh, and it's very useful. But we do have this little components tab up here, which you may have not seen in any other uh, editor. Okay, and we're going to be looking at how to use that in uh, later. And we have some buttons up here in the main toolbar, and then we have these buttons up here. And right now, the components one is highlighted. So right now, we're in basically component mode, and component mode is where we start to add things. So. Think of component mode like a, a car garage, and it's the area of the garage where you're going to start to take your, your wheels and attach them to uh, your car. It's where you're going to go ahead and start to attach the doors to your car frame, to the chassis. It's where you're going to start to paint the car, well, maybe not paint the car, but do a bunch of stuff to the car. Put it all together, basically. Put all the nuts and bolts together and build the thing. This is where you would do it. This is your blueprint garage okay the components uh, window or component mode if we go to the left this is the defaults window and this just has information it's just parameters and different settings and stuff like that for now we don't have to worry about any of this stuff for now we're just gonna leave this stuff alone these default settings are fine we're not gonna mess with it and then on the right we have the graph button if I click on that this is what you saw a little while ago. This is where you're going to be working about, I'd say, 90 to 95 percent of the time when working in Blueprint. You're going to be in the graph view, okay? And down here it says Blueprint, and you have all this space. Now, the first thing before you do anything is you have to know how to navigate inside of this graph view. So navigating is really easy. If you want to zoom in and out, just use your uh, your mouse scroll wheel. So scroll out to zoom out, scroll in to zoom in. Pretty simple, right? If you want to move around, click and hold the right mouse button and just drag. So you can just move around. Very similar or pretty much exactly the same as moving around in, say, the material editor, stuff like that. So pretty straightforward. Up here we have a main toolbar. There's a whole bunch of buttons up here. I'm not going to go over all of them uh, right now. As we build our blueprint, and we need any of these buttons, we'll see what they do then. Right now I'm not going to jump into this stuff. I don't want to overwhelm you. Uh, we're not going to be using most of these buttons most of the time anyway. So um, I've actually built blueprints without using any of these buttons for a really long time. So we're not going to be up there all the time. Right here we have two tabs. So we have a construction script and we have a uh, an event graph. And this is where we're going to be working most of the time. Construction script, um, we're actually not going to work on that in this uh, set of videos right here. We're going to be working mainly in the event graph. This is where most of the magic happens. This is where we actually tell Unreal, hey, do this, do that, do this and this other thing. And Unreal is going to do it, and that's pretty cool. Over here we have this My Blueprint tab. This is where you start to build variables and functions and stuff like that for your blueprint. And I don't want to overwhelm you or anything. Um, don't worry about what all that stuff means. We'll see what it means as we start to build our own blueprint. When we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. Down here is the details. Again, just like any other editor in Unreal. This is where we, uh, if we select something that's here, right now there's nothing here, but if there was, we would see the details over here. 
On the right we have the palette. Now this palette's pretty cool because it's got uh, a list of favorites. And by default, it's got a list of different favorites. So it's got like an event begin play, event tick, get player pawn, all this stuff that you usually use. And the cool thing is that we can add our own favorites later. We're not going to do that right now this instant. And then we have the ability to find nodes. So if we want to, we can search for a node by expanding this library. And when we do that, we get a whole bunch of subcategories. So if we know we have to do something that involves AI, we can open that up and whoa, look at that. We got a whole bunch of functions in here. Click on, say, navigation. Whoa, we got a whole bunch more stuff. So there's literally tons and 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 tons of different nodes that you can use in Blueprint. I'm going to collapse that for now before uh, I don't want your brain to explode or anything. We also have a search field, so if I knew I had to search for something like, let's say, a set um, rotation or something like that or set relative rotation, I can start to search for it and Unreal will go ahead and filter out any items that have uh, the words that I'm looking for in name, which is really, really cool. We can also uh, sort this by category as well. So if we're looking for stuff that has to do with the HUD, we can search for that. If uh, we need stuff that works with lights, we can search for that, so on and so forth. Not going to worry about that too much. This area in here, this is the area that we're mainly going to focus on because that's where all the magic happens. Okay, so. Uh, before I end this video, I just want to say one thing. Do not be scared of Blueprint. Blueprint's actually a really nice guy. Blueprint is your new best friend when it comes to game development. Um, if you learn the Blueprint language and learn how to talk to Blueprint, Blueprint's going to be very, very, very good to you. So this video has gone long enough. I'm going to end it here. And in the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll get started building this thing.